I'm going to now switch gears a little bit, both in terms of the educational content, so what I am teaching you about interacting with ChatGPT, and also about the specific research topic, because uh, yeah, I, I would like to do something other than the Bayesian brain hypothesis and color perception. Okay, so here is a, a paragraph that I have composed. This is the prompt for ChatGPT. I'm starting a new research project on criticality in the brain during anesthesia in patients undergoing surgery. So now I describe a little bit about the experiment design, and I state uh, that I have hypotheses. So my hypothesis is that the Hearst exponent, as measured through this particular analysis method, will decrease towards 0.5 at the uh, deepest depth of anesthesia and so on. Okay, so I'm basically just giving ChatGPT some information about research that I would like to do, some hypotheses, some background about those hypotheses, and I'm asking ChatGPT to give me feedback on those hypotheses. Again, ChatGPT is helping us to think more critically and carefully and work through our hypotheses and give us better uh, results to let us do uh, better research. These are all the kinds of interactions that you would have with your supervisor or your senior colleagues um, if you have access to them and they have time. But the truth is, you know, people are busy. Not everyone has the luxury of having quick and ready access to really great, knowledgeable um, researchers and academic support. So, you know, something like ChatGPT can be a really powerful tool to help you become a better academic and a better researcher, a better scientist, um, even if you are not so lucky as to be in an excellent lab in a top research university. Okay, so ChatGPT uh, replies that my hypotheses are intriguing and involve a thoughtful approach to studying criticality during anesthesia. And then it breaks down the, uh, its feedback according to each of the two hypotheses that I suggested. Now, I'm not going to take uh, the time to read this all to you, partly because it's um, fairly topic-specific, but also because the main point is to show you how you can leverage ChatGPT to improve your own thinking and your own hypotheses. Okay, and then uh, ChatGPT is, is giving me some further considerations to think about the depth of anesthesia and how I am going to measure anesthesia, whether I need to worry about patient selection, of course, statistical power is always an important issue in any area of research. It is particularly important uh, when you're doing medical research in patients, uh, just because the effect sizes tend to be smaller and data tend to be noisier and the sample sizes tend to be more difficult to increase. And we get some uh, encouraging words here at the end. Good luck with your research. Okay, but let's say, you know, ChatGPT is not being critical enough. Maybe ChatGPT is just being too positive. ChatGPT in general does have this limitation of trying to be polite and friendly and helpful. But, you know, sometimes in, in research and in science and academia, the most helpful thing is not to do a project because maybe it's just not a very interesting project. Let's see if we can approach that level of criticality uh, or of being um, critical a little bit more. So thanks, that's helpful, but I want you to be more critical as if you are a grumpy old professor. So I am telling ChatGPT to be more critical, to act as if he is a grumpy old professor. Don't worry about being polite. Is this study worth my time? Is it likely to make a significant contribution to literature and so on? Is it good science or just a hobby project that no one would care about? This is a really important question. Um, imagine you are a PhD student, you've worked for four years, maybe five or six years on a research project, and then at the very end, you come to the conclusion or you're starting to get feedback from other people that your research is not good, it's not interesting, it's a boring topic, and nobody cares about it. And now you feel like, hey, I just spent five years of my life doing research on this topic, couldn't someone have told me in the beginning that this wasn't an interesting research project? This is something that a human would be able to tell you, but ChatGPT is not necessarily going to tell you that. It's too polite to say that. Okay, so that is my motivation for trying to ask ChatGPT to be a little bit more critical. So let's get into the nitty-gritty with no sugarcoating.
This is a really great response. I'm going to scroll through this slowly. I'm not going to read this all to you, but I'm going to scroll through this answer slowly so that if you would like to pause the video to read this response on your own, then uh, you will have the opportunity to do this. Okay, I would like to point out a few things. First of all, notice that the tone of ChatGPT's writing has changed quite a bit. He says here, uh, are you prepared for this level of technical complexity, pointing out that these analyses that I'm proposing are not so easy. Um, they're highly sensitive to the quality of the data. And here we say uh, that, so my hypothesis is a bit safe, shall we say. So here, ChatGPT is even being a little bit snarky. Um, so finding that the Hearst exponential uh, exponent decreases isn't exactly groundbreaking. It's an incremental addition to the field at best. This is starting to be a little bit more honest. Um, okay, so here with regards to the second hypothesis, I've given no theoretical or empirical rationale for why this might be the case. This is good feedback. Now, in fairness, it is possible that uh, I would give, uh, let me see, go back to this. So, you know, presumably if I have really thought about this research, this really is something I want to do I've thought about this more. I have more written, more um, thoughts in my head, more justifications for making these hypotheses, but I haven't told ChatGPT about that. So this particular comment may or may not be uh, relevant, but it's certainly a good one to make. This is also a little bit snarky. EEG during anesthesia in surgical patients. I hope you're prepared for a lot of variability. That is true. Uh, these are all uh, good points and uh, could be confounding variables unless we um, control for them uh, or at least select uh, data very carefully. Now, one other thing that I would have added as a human if someone approached me with a question like this is try to find existing data that's already published instead of collecting new data. That is not a um, piece of feedback that ChatGPT gave me here. Okay, so roll up your sleeves and get ready to dive deep because this won't be a walk in the park. Here is a follow-up prompt to ChatGPT. So I really appreciate your feedback. Can you suggest four to six specific, concrete, falsifiable hypotheses to test based on my initial hypotheses and your suggestions? So now I'm asking ChatGPT to help brainstorm and give me some ideas that are based on the collaboration between my initial thoughts and ChatGPT's feedback, which was initially a little bit too positive and light, and then a little bit more critical. Okay, great. So we get six specific, concrete, falsifiable hypotheses that we could uh, start looking at. And now, of course, you know all about iterating through and interacting with ChatGPT. So we could ask some follow-up questions. I could say, uh, make some suggestions for analyses that I could run for um, hypothesis three. I could also ask ChatGPT in this case to justify how he came up with this discretization. So why older than 60 compared to younger than 40? What about the group in between? Is there a uh, motivation? Is there a reason why ChatGPT used these numbers, 60 and 40, as cutoffs, uh, and so on? So I'm not going to... Um, uh, follow too much further with that, but I would like to ask another question about interpretation. So now the next prompt is, I know that a Hurst exponent of 0.5 corresponds to a pure, nor pure noise time series. By the way, don't worry about some of these details that you don't have to know about the Hurst exponent and how to interpret it. Uh, what I'm illustrating to you is that you can have not only general discussions with ChatGPT, but also very specific, very technical discussions with ChatGPT. Um, to, in this case, to ask for an interpretation of a Hurst exponent around 0.8. So ChatGPT is aware of technical points as well as general writing skills. Now, this is kind of a good summary of the Hurst exponent. Uh, it's not entirely correct because the Hurst exponent can be above one, it's not bound by uh, one. It doesn't have an upper bound this way. Um, but otherwise, this is a, a, a mostly good summary of what the different ranges of Hurst exponents indicate, uh, including an interpretation of 0.8 in the context of neuroscience. This is still a little bit vague, uh, but that's okay. I mean, I think to get a more precise 
interpretation of a Hurst exponent of around 0.8, we would really need to dive deeper into the literature and start reading papers that ChatGPT might not have had access to because they are published behind paywalls.